Hey everyone, welcome back, Erica here. First and foremost, if you're new to the channel and you have gone through some of the content, if you like what you're seeing and you wanna subscribe, please do so, as I do update my content often to all of my returning subscribers. Welcome back. In this video, what I wanted to do was, I just kind of wanted to do a Q&A um, when it deals with narcissism only because I know that there are a lot of different people who have a lot of different questions. There are a lot of different videos that speak in reference to narcissism more on a general sense. And I really wanted to make sure that we properly understood the different components of narcissism. And of course, a lot of the different questions that people have because no two situations are the same no two narcissists are either. Now, considering that there are so many different types of narcissists and no two narcissists are the same, meaning that no two people who carry narcissism, narcissistic personality disorder are the same, may act the same, may do the same things as what a generalized narcissist has been explained to be, the best thing to do is use your intuition. Now, all of these videos that a lot of people put up pertaining to narcissism give you the signs, give you the things that you need to look for if you feel you might be in the presence of a narcissist or you might be dealing with one or your family member might be one or friends might be one or coworkers might be one. These are all put up for you to understand. These are the red flags that you have to look for if you're not sure. But Without further ado, we're just going to get into the questions. Now, the first common question that people ask is, how do you spot the narcissist? This generally depends on you. Now, this depends on how you're feeling. Now, if you're in the presence of a narcissist or you think you might be in the presence or you can't really tell if you are, you have to pretty much test how you feel around certain people, certain individuals. Now, if you feel that you are on an even keel with them, you're on a level, you're on an equal level ground with someone, you feel valued, you feel appreciated, you feel like this person or these people listen to you, they understand you, they sympathize with you, they empathize with you, chances are you're not in the presence of a narcissist. Now, on the other hand, if you feel belittled, if you feel that your energy is being drained, if you feel no sense of peace, you feel unheard, you feel like the person or the people that you're surrounded by don't really understand you or don't wanna take the time to understand you or wanna take the time to listen to any kind of matters that has to do with anyone else besides themselves, then chances are you are around someone or people who suffer from narcissistic personality disorder or have a very, very high case of narcissistic traits. Now, a narcissist themselves, they don't have empathy. So chances are you are around a narcissist if they do not empathize with you or sympathize with you on any level in any situations or matters in your lives. And if you know that you are dealing with someone or you do care about someone who is a narcissist or suffers from narcissistic personality disorder, it's kind of like running on an endless treadmill. And all you're doing is walking on eggshells because the people or the person, they're making you feel so devalued, so unvalued. They don't take into consideration what's going on with you. They don't take the time to really understand what is going on with you if you have something going on because they don't care. They're all about themselves. They're about their own matters. They're about their own situations. And whatever problems it is they're facing are more important than you and your issues. If you find yourself caring about people like this, you see yourself saying to yourself, how can someone who claims to care about me have so little empathy and put me down at the drop of a hat? If you find yourself trying to gain their approval and trying to avoid their disapproval, you find yourself really 
trying a little too hard to really prove something to them these these are forms of toxic people and as hard as it may be as hard as it may be for you to actually say i have to cut ties with people like this you have to because i'm a firm believer that if it doesn't sit right with your spirit if it doesn't sit right with you you know that these types of people are just nothing but a hazard then you have to make the clear concise choice to say i have to rid myself of this because it's not healthy dealing with people who suffer from personality disorders can be very very detrimental to your mental health as well as physical now another question that people have is does the narcissist or people with narcissistic personality disorder ever change i've already made a video on this but just to reiterate Narcissistic personality disorder is a distortion of the, the mind. It's the distortion of thinking, of the way people think. It's something where you have been programmed, not you, but you know, people who suffer from the disorder, they have been programmed to believe that this type of thinking is normal, is healthy, but it's healthy for the person who is in possession of the personality disorder it's not healthy for the dynamics that they try to create with other people because the disorder itself is basically saying that my needs my wants are all that matter now some say that they can change some say chances are it's very rare based on research after the teenage years if the person or the people who suffer from this disorder or who are narcissists do not seek the kind of help that they need to get because let's face it, they sit there thinking they don't have a problem. So why would you get help for a problem that you don't believe exists? After the teenage years up and into adulthood, it's pretty much ingrained in their mind. So they're gonna continuously be the way they are, thinking that what they're doing is normal what they're doing is protecting themselves because that's my belief that narcissistic people are basically doing what it is they have to do to survive whatever dynamics they get in and chances are it's because of their roots it's because of their upbringing you're not going to be narcissistic if you have two secure parents that have shown you stability that have shown you love and emotions that have shown you empathy and sympathy you're not going to be a narcissistic person because you were not created to be that way there is that big correlation between the parents and the child and granted we all went through our own periods where we had our little rebellious stages and we've gone through what we've gone through as teenagers but as adults we know right from wrong we know inconsiderate from considerate, sympathetic from unsympathetic, empathetic from unempathetic. You understand? It's not something that you just picked up the minute you walked outside your house. It's something that you have been taught to believe. So with that being said, as much as we would want to believe that they are capable of changing without getting the proper help that they should have gotten at a certain point of their lives as they age, it's not going to change. It may diminish in their tactics when they get older because you know it's to the point where what used to work before doesn't work now. But when it comes to their mind frame, their their you know their training, their way of thinking, no, they don't change. They don't. And I strongly advise, I always advise people that if you're dealing with people who are narcissists or have NPD it's best to just detach yourself from them because all you'll end up doing is continuously setting yourself up for more disappointment, more heartache, more problems, more toxicity. And it's just, it's not worth your health. Can you beat the narcissist at their own game? Now you gotta ask yourself, is this the kind of game that you wanna play? Because you see, narcissists, they're the types that do not like to play fair. And they're the types who are very underhanded. They will do underhanded things because 
You gotta remember with them, status, attention, admiration, adoration. They're doing any and everything possible to gain these things, but under false pretenses. Now, if you are not narcissistic, you're not a narcissist, why would you want to play their game? In fact, they rely on you to play their game, okay? How does a car run? A car runs when you go and you put gas in it, right? So when you put the gas in and you fill up the tank, it's going to go as far as you need it to go. That is simply what a narcissist is. The narcissist is the driver. The car is their ego. And the gas is your supply. Now, playing their game means putting that gas in their tank and giving them something to run with. You understand? Narcissists are terrified of failure. They're terrified of being powerless or appearing powerless. And they're terrified of their egos being shattered. The best way to do this is not play the game at all. I know sometimes it can be hard because they tend to do things that'll really probably make you step out of character. But this is where self-control comes in. This is where you have to really, really put yourself, your mind in the frame of, I'm not playing this game with you. I know what you're about and I know what you're doing. And you know what? I'm going to let you do what you do. I'm going to let you play whatever game you want to play. But a game can only be played if there's more than one player. You understand? So if you don't play, they have no choice but to forfeit. And that's going to be a shock to their ego. That's going to be the feeling of being flawed. Holy crap. I didn't get to this person. Holy crap. This person saw right through me. Holy crap. What am I going to do now? They could try to play the game with somebody else. And I always say it. You play the game with the wrong people. Somebody going to get hurt. You want to beat the narcissist at their own game? Simply don't play. Plain and simple. We're human. I understand that. And I understand that sometimes we can't help ourselves. But this is a pure demonstration of self-control. Next question. What are some of the worst things you can do in dealing with a narcissist? Simply put, depend on them. Now, we know that narcissistic people are unreliable, okay, because they only tend to their own selfish ways, their selfish desires. Narcissistic people will get more out of a codependent person or a person who has codependent issues as opposed to people who have secure attachments. Now, people who have secure attachments are people who were raised to be not only self-sufficient, not only with empathy and sympathy, but they were raised by their parents who have demonstrated to them a secure, healthy lifestyle, a secure, healthy home. So people who have grown up with this type of dynamic, at the very first sight of a red flag, especially in dealing with a narcissist, they're giving them the boot. That's why a narcissist likes to pick and choose their victims. They like to pick people who have issues. Now, granted, we all have issues, but codependent people are people who, much like a narcissist, endured that trauma in their childhood, but they were basically left to rely on being emotionally dependent on someone else. Now, a narcissist will feed off of that because the codependent person is going to give the narcissist the supply that they want. Even if the narcissist only gives the codependent person little breadcrumbs here and there, or it gives them an I love you here and there, and yeah, you mean the world to me and all of that, whatever little attention they give them, as long as the narcissist is being fueled in return. A codependent person enables a narcissist because they are not emotionally independent. So since the narcissist is giving them reward and punishment behavior, the codependent person becomes the people pleaser in that they try to keep everything even so they can avoid any kind of punishment and get what they perceive as love. 
A narcissist basically needs a codependent person. So there is that level of codependency between the two. The codependent person needs to feel validated because they're just already filled with insecurity. They're filled with anxious anxiety within themselves. And the narcissist is just pretty much giving them a little bit of what it is they want. And in return, they're getting, they're getting, the narcissist is getting the maximum. The codependent is getting the bare minimum. So to answer that question on a positive note, the best thing you can do for yourself is be emotionally independent, work on your own attachment, work on your own security, your own insecurities, and bring yourself to a level of self-love. I always primarily focus on inner work and inner work deals with a massive amount of self-love. Self-love is key. And once you've demonstrated that you have enough self-love, that you are emotionally independent and you don't need anybody because codependent people need, a secure person wants. Two different things. Once you've demonstrated that, there's nothing for the narcissist to latch on to. There's nothing for the narcissist to leech on because you have basically decided that you're going to put your foot down and you're not going to enable their behaviors. So technically, a narcissist really needs a codependent. How can you protect yourself from a destructive narcissist? Now, we've already learned that narcissists come in different flavors and different styles. You know, you can have the ones that are very sly and cunning and charming, or you can have the ones that are brutes and can be potentially violent. Whichever one you come across, the main thing you have to ask yourself after learning about narcissists, learning about narcissism and learning about the different things that you could either potentially go through that you have gone through, you got to ask yourself, at what cost? At what cost? At what cost is it worth you dealing with someone who is a narcissist? Now, if you want to protect yourself from a narcissist, from narcissists, anyone, could be family, friends, anybody, my best suggestion is cutting contact. You go no contact, you set the strictest and strongest boundaries, and you can even forewarn them. If you dare cross these boundaries, you're going to be facing consequences that are not gonna be very, very high grade when it comes to your ego. You have to remember that when you're dealing with a narcissist, it's not about you. It never has been about you. It's always been about them. And even if they try to blame you for whatever their tactics were, their manipulation, the gaslighting, anything, even if it didn't happen with you, it was gonna happen with somebody else. It's going to happen to somebody else. Narcissists, they have no quarrels, no quarrels with the things that they do. They don't care. They don't care. And if you do not want to be dealing with people who clearly don't give a damn about you and your feelings, then don't deal with them. The best way to get rid of a tumor is what? Cut it at the root and get rid of it. That is it. People have been forewarning so many people about narcissists for God knows how long. And it's not talking to just talk about it. This is the real deal. Toxic people are toxic. They're poison. And you continuously dealing with them, you continuously allowing them in your life and allowing them to do whatever it is they want to do, it's only going to make things worse for you. They don't care. They already know that they're toxic. They know what they're doing. They already have accepted who they are. But why should you? And lastly, how do you heal or recover from dealing with a narcissist? Well, this all depends on you. Everybody heals and recovers differently. But the strongest thing that you can do is first recognize, recognize that you feel betrayed, you feel hurt, you feel manipulated, lied to, okay? That everything was an illusion, everything was a sham, 
you know, if you feel conned or duped or whatever the case may be, recognize that. Okay, come to terms with that. A lot of time people don't come to terms with it and they don't accept it. So what they can end up doing is actually becoming like the person or the persons that have traumatized them. That's the one thing you don't want to do. One of the ways of accepting is that narcissists, just much like all of us, were trying to get their needs met. However, they were doing it in the wrong way. Now you were trying to get your needs met by projecting love, affection, empathy, sympathy, you know, all of the normal things that a normal human being would project in order to have that reciprocated to them. But since a narcissist was trained to believe that they have to manipulate and they have to lie and they have to do all kinds of sneaky tactics to get what it is that they want, that's where you guys pretty much just fell off with one another. All right. Once you come to understanding, I strongly emphasize on understanding because once you learn the components of a narcissist, once you learn what it is that they've been trained to believe they should do to get what they want out of any kind of dynamic, you can then one that it's not your fault. It never was your fault. Two narcissists they don't have self-esteem. As much as they wanna parade it around as if they do, as much as they want to walk with highly inflated egos, those egos are as hollow as my walls, okay? Those egos are very, very paper thin. And since they are unable to create self-validation, self-esteem, they feel the need to suck it out of somebody else the only thing you can do from that point on is learn from what it is you've experienced and learn to apply discernment in future dynamics in future relationships so that way you can look for the red flags you can look for the signs and the behaviors and avoid it also do what the narcissist could not or would not do for you honor yourself if you manage to get through your healing stages and you manage to get through the motions of dealing with the, you know, the, with the the circumstances, everything that you've gone through, continue to honor yourself. Honor your anger, honor your pain, honor your value, honor yourself. Your self-worth will clearly show once you get through your healing stages and you really just validate yourself you really love yourself and you really show that you know what no you didn't break me you didn't break me you didn't break me down if anything i became stronger i became stronger i became much smarter and you know what i'm not going to let what you did to me affect my future relationships but i am going to play it smart you may have faced a big deal of injustice but know something it didn't go in vain because it taught you something. It taught you that you're not going to be that vulnerable person anymore. It taught you to shield yourself, to protect yourself. And I always say that if people, toxic people, narcissistic people, any other kind of person that is the total opposite of who we are or has the energy, the total opposite energy of what it is that we carry, they come across us because it's to teach us something. It's to teach us something but about ourselves. So if you manage to get away from narcissists, like I say, be it if it's from your family, friends, love interest, what have you, if you manage to get away from that and be a stronger version of yourself and be someone who actually demonstrated strengths beyond even your own belief, then you have officially started the ending of a cycle. You have started your new beginning in your life, your way of thinking, and it starts with self-love. That's where it starts with. Inner work is important. Continue to do that. Once you do the inner work, you work from the inside out. Trust me, from that point on, you're going to be so intuitive with it. You're going to be so discerning about everything. And you got to learn to trust yourself. 
Okay, trust that you're going to make the right decisions. Know the difference between healthy relationships, toxic relationships. Okay, if you're in a relationship with anyone, toxic is when it's you versus them. Healthy is when it's the both of you versus the problem. Well, guys, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I just wanted to do this to kind of just answer a few questions. I mean, I'm pretty sure there are plenty more. And if anybody does have any questions, please leave them in the comment section and I'll be sure to answer to the best of my ability as I do primarily focus on helping people become emotionally independent and deciphering differences. You know, that's that's the key thing. But your mental health is what's important. Okay, so if you have questions, please leave them. If you have feedback, please leave it for me. I love interacting with everybody. And I love hearing good news in regards to people who have been going through their recovery and who have actually managed to really break free from that. That really, that does give me a big, big sense of hope and and knowing that people are really taking the steps to to their new beginnings. This is why I do what I do. Always know that you have a support system no matter where you go, even if it's within a complete stranger because you're not alone. All right. So guys, I hope you enjoyed it. I will be working on my next video. And like I said, if you have any questions, leave them in the comment section. If you like the video, please give me a thumbs up. You know, I'm always appreciative of that too. And until next time, guys, namaste.